Hello everybody, how are you all doing? I hope everyone's doing great. Um, I realise I haven't done a video since I think, well, I put up a video of my, one of my good friends, um, charity boxing nights, not long ago, just a little like video blog um, of it, which was a really good night actually. Um, but before that, I suppose my, my last video was my mukbang with my friend Rachel, my McDonald's mukbang. Um, and that was so fun. I've got to do another one of them again. Rachel definitely wants to be on the channel again. Um, but yeah, I realised that was a few weeks ago now. Um, and I haven't purposely not posted a video. I just, like everyone, just been busy. Um, but I have to make time for YouTube, obviously. This is my channel. This is why I started. This is what I wanted to do. Um, so today is a bit of a mixed feelings day. Um, I've been suffering the last sort of two, three days with really bad vertigo, um, which is when you just get, constantly get dizzy. And I woke up yesterday and literally the room was just spinning. Oh, and I haven't had it for so long and I rarely get it. Um, it's just awful. Like, like right now I'm just sitting here and I, I, I'm sitting still, but I feel like I'm doing this. It's really quite horrible and it's horrible when you've got stuff to do. But luckily today I'm not really doing anything. So it, I can have a bit of a chill day because that's really the only way you can treat it. Um, just by chilling out and laying down and resting really. Um, perfect for when you want to start motivating yourself to get busy and get fit and get in shape. When vertigo comes along then you can just have that excuse of, Oh, I can't, I can't do it. I feel worse, vertigo. <laughs> but um, today... Um, is the 30th of October 2019 and it actually marks the two year anniversary of my sister passing away um, and I've not felt too bad with the date coming up um, it's been a bit mixed I've not really been too down and upset I've been very busy like I said with work and obviously people who are on my channel you know that I've got a six year old and god they keep you busy um so it was only sort of a couple of days ago it hit me that it was so soon and it, it um I got a bit teary on my own had, had sort of five minutes to myself had a bit of a cry um my, my little girl was in bed my partner was at work um I think sometimes you need to have a little bit of a cry just to let it out but I also think it's really good to not wallow like I used to um, because it was really hard when you have a day of literally not doing anything and laying in bed all day and crying and everything like that. It's really hard, I think, to then get out of that state. That state. Um, so I try not to dwell too much because it, it's just really fucking hard to get out of it. Um, and you have to because you have to get on. Um, so, yeah, it's been a bit mixed. I'm not, to be honest, today I'm not really feeling anything i'm not really feeling bad or sad i've not really cried much and that's okay you know you don't have to um think to yourself well it's the date so i have to cry and i have to be sad and i have to it's like because because ev every day i think about her so it's it's not a case of this is my one time of a year where i can cry and be really sad about her because i'm sad about her every day and i think about her every day um it's just the date isn't it um so it's hard it doesn't feel like two years at all I think that's what upsets me the most. It it literally feels like yesterday um, that I got a phone call from my dad saying what had happened. Um, and it's like two years is crazy to think two years it goes so quick and it's fucking horrible. And I remember one of my good friends, Kenny, actually saying to me, do you know what it does? I think at the time his mum had passed away for about, it had been about five years or so since his mum had passed away, I think. And I remember him saying to me, do you know what, it just goes so quickly. He said, like, you just don't don't even realise. He said, it goes so, so fast. He said, before you know it. I know that's what he was saying. He was saying, before you know it, it'll be five years, it'll be ten years. He said, it goes so quickly and you don't... It's just crazy. And you know what, it's true. I think this year has gone quick anyway for everyone. Everyone I talk to says, God, 2019 has gone so quick. Can't believe Christmas is, like, whatever, eight weeks away or whatever. But, um... Glasses are constantly wonky. Oh, I've got a wonky head. But, um, yeah, 
it, it that is what's scary to actually sit there and think two years like i haven't spoken to my sister in two years i had it's just unbelievable and i actually think back to it it was because i remember it was just after my daughter started reception class and now she's in year two um and it's just crazy and it's sad because i do always think about Every time I take a photo or something of Ruby, I always used to send it to her um, where she lived in Birmingham, like three hours away from from me. So it's, um, yeah, that's crazy. But I've been a bit umming and ahhing about what to do. And I think that's really a hard thing as well. When, when you've lost someone, people who have lost will probably relate to me. You don't really know what to do, like, but you feel like you have to do something. Like my partner was saying to me yesterday, what are you going to do tomorrow? What do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, well, do you want to sort of just stay at home and just, you know, like be in your own comfort and or do you want to go out and distract yourself? I've not got any work today, which I would think was a bit of a bugger because really it is good and distracting. Um, and I just said to him, I've, I really don't know. Like, I have no idea how I'm going to feel tomorrow. Like, I've been feeling okay lately. I could have woke up today feeling absolutely shit and not wanting to get out of bed. But like I said, I don't want to get into that spiral um, or just wanting to stay indoors all day, be in my own comfort. Or I could literally want to be with him all day um, and going out and doing something to distract me. But at the minute, it's quarter past one in the afternoon and I've done fuck all. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm obsessed with watching Jeffree Star makeup. Um, you'll know him from YouTube and I love watching him and I've been watching his documentary series with Shane Dawson making their new conspiracy palette and I love watching that so I've been, literally that's all I've done today I've eaten breakfast and watched that and I need to clear out my house I need to I mean two hours time my little girl comes back from her school trip um so it's just like what do I do and we don't really have anywhere to go for my sister um my mum has her ashes so I've, I think it would be different if if she was somewhere and then I could go there and, and sort of just sit and suppose be with yourself for a bit. Um, although she does have a plaque on a bench in a park in Greenwich where we, me and my sisters and my mum and dad brought us up um, where I spent all my childhood and where I still consider home. Um, we, yeah, so she's got a little plaque there. Um... And I've been, I'm in an hour actually over the last sort of, my partner's just gone to the gym because I think he thought he had to stay with me all day. And I was like, look, go, you know, go, do, it's a normal day. So just go. So he went, he's gone to the gym for a couple of hours now. And by the time he finishes, my little girl will come out of school. And then it's mum mode. Um, so I've been sort of, I'm in an hour with myself. With, uh, should I just go down to the bench and put some flowers down? I bought some flowers. Um, but I like to put flowers in my vase. Um might be able to see it. I'll show you quickly that's my vase over there that's my horrible dead flowers my house is decorated a little bit at the moment Halloweeny um for my little girl <laughs> and partly for me um but yeah so I don't really know I sort of thought to myself should I just go down there and sit you know just sit for like an hour and have your own thoughts and you know put some flowers down there and it's hard because I don't really like to be on my own with my own thoughts because that's when I do get into my sad, depressive stage. Um, so it's difficult. But, yeah, so I do I do think there's no right, there isn't a right thing to do. I think even if you do have somewhere to go, if your loved one is buried or cremated somewhere in a cemetery or whatever, and I do do think it, it, it you don't have to do that. You know, some people don't like to do that, and that's fine. I've never experienced this before. I've never lost someone um, so close to me. Um, since my sister, I've, my nan and granddad have passed away um, and they are actually scattered together in a church near where they lived. Um, but this was my sister and is my sister. And uh, someone who, because she, I suppose she was the oldest sister, I think you just always think you're never going to have to go your life without them. Um, because, I don't know, they're older than you and you just don't ever think about that. I mean, even, not till you're older, do you know what I mean? You don't, no one thinks about this stuff, like your parents passing away or anything like that. No one thinks about it. Like You think you don't have to do, you think I don't have to think about that until I'm old. Like, even me with my diabetes, you know, I've read up some 
I've had loads of um dietitian meetings and diabetes meetings and carb counting meetings lately about my diabetes and I've learnt things that you don't really want to learn but facts of life like you know we are type 1 diabetics we are more um at risk of things like strokes and heart disease and lung and fucking not lung liver and kidney failure and oh fucking things like that and if you think oh, I've got a lot to look forward to then <laughs> but um yeah so even with that I don't I don't try and think too much about it, although I saw a fact thing once that said the average type 1 diabetic, bleh, average type 1 diabetic person lives to their 60s, and I thought, that's not really old, is it? Like, I'm 30 next year, that's half my life gone, if that's a fact. Um, 60 isn't really old, but then, you know, people pass away when they're 30, when they're 40, when they're 50, and it's sad. My granddad, Billy, passed away when he was 52, before I was born, and I never met him. And I wish I had, because he sounds like a laugh, and he sounds like I'd actually be a grandparent I can relate to. <laughs> but, um, he had mental issues. <laughs> wonder where I get that from. But, um, mental health issues, shall I say, not mental issues, sorry. But, yeah, um, I don't know. It's just, I don't think there is a right thing to do. I do think it's brilliant when people celebrate a life rather than mourn it. But obviously when someone first passes away, that's what you do. It's natural. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a difficult situation. There's no right or wrong. Although I really do want to do something. I don't just want to sit here watching YouTube videos until my sister, my daughter comes out of school. Um, I've spoken to my mum this morning and asked her how her and my dad are. Silly question. But my mum was actually able to laugh with me on the phone, which was nice because... I think sometimes you do think, you know, if you sit, especially on a day like this, and you laugh, I think you feel so guilty. And it's like, why shouldn't you be laughing? You should be laughing. And I love laughing about my sister because she fucking really was a character. She really was. She was fucking crazy. And she was, tell it how it is, sister. And she was very mouthy. And she was, not in a nasty way, she was just like, um... She would just fucking tell you how it is, really. She could be a nasty cow, but we all can. Um, but she was a typical big sister, honestly. Like, always taking care of everything. Always fucking organised. Always arranging things, like... She would always get people together. We've connected... I've connected with some family. Um, again. On my dad's side. And that was only actually because of her. When my nan passed away before my sister... The year before my sister, um, Katie then, Katie, my sister, got in contact with family that we haven't seen for so long. And they're close, they're uncles and cousins and aunts. And you just think, they're literally five minutes down the road from me. And you think, all these years I've never bothered going to see them. I've never really talked to them. And my little girl has actually grown really close with my little cousin. And they play really well together. And it's it's so nice. And I think we only got in contact with them again because of Katie. Because she got everyone together again. And it's it's sad that a year later after that we lost her. And I've tried my hardest to keep it going. Keep the relationship there with them. And I do see them often. And she actually went to the circus with my little cousin the other week. My little girl. Um, so yeah, it's just difficult. But um, it's alright to be a bit sad. I just sat here actually now just thinking I've got like little home movies of me and my sisters and our friends when we were younger. I've got it on DVD. And I thought to myself, should I sit here and watch it? Like, I haven't watched it in so long. And I really enjoy watching it, because I, I think it's funny watching yourself when you're little. Because you remember it as well. You remember thinking, I remember when my dad used to record us, and like <laughs> things like that. So it's funny, but... um, I don't know, and then I just thought to myself, but if I sit here and watch it, I'm just going to be so sad. I'm going to cry. I don't want to make myself unhappy. That was I was saying that to my partner last night. I was saying to him, I don't want to make myself sad. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to be sad today. Like, I have to make myself upset and cry because it's a sad day. Because, like I said, every day is a sad day because she's not here. And every every day is hard. Um, but I really enjoy watching the DVDs, so... I might watch them in a minute. I might just have some lunch. 
and watch them. But that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm quite torn between should I go out, should I go to her bench and put flowers down and um, is it wrong if I don't and is it stupid if I sit here watching videos of us when we were little, making myself upset. And it's like, there's no right or wrong. Like, you just do what you want to do. Come tomorrow, I'll probably be all right. Um, because then Christmas is coming up. You know, straight after Halloween, we think of Christmas. And I can't wait for Christmas because I love Christmas. And I loved it so much growing up with my sisters. It was always so big. We've always had such a big family. And it is different now because we don't talk to a lot of our family. So it's, it's hard because your support network kind of fucks off. At times when you really need them. Um, so yeah, it's difficult. But there's no right or wrong. You know, I don't. I still haven't decided what I want to do. I need to hurry the fuck up and decide. Because it's now nearly half past one. And I've not got long. And Greenwich is a bit shit with traffic. Getting down Greenwich and back. If you live in my area, you'll know. So, I don't know. This vertigo is doing my nothing as well. Like Every now and then I'll just be sitting here. And it feels like I'm going... It's a fucking nightmare. Um, so, yeah. It's a hard day. But I think if I look back after this to my first video on my channel, it's completely different. And I do really feel like I'm a different person now. More myself again. Um, yeah. So... I mean, anyone out there who's lost someone, it doesn't matter if it's someone... I mean, it does matter if it's someone close to you because you feel the grief more. Um, I mean, so many of us have lost her. You know, she's... Facebook today is just bombarded with messages of about Katie and it's really weird when you open up your Facebook and you see Katie's name tagged everywhere and for two seconds you're like, Katie Mega, what's she doing? And then you're like, oh, <laughs> it's not her. That's really fucking weird. That's why I don't. I don't, haven't really been on Facebook today because there's my partner. I don't really want to see with it all, and it's not nothing bad because people. It's lovely. There's so many people. She was so well liked. Her funeral, man. She had fucking. I don't even know how many people we had there. Well over a hundred people there. Well over. She was. There was people standing up because there was no more seats. She was so loved. Honestly, she was so popular. Um, just friends everywhere. She had people like it wasn't just people that knew her, it was friends. Um and do you know what? It really was It really was such a send off for her. Like it was just the best for her and the things that the the priest said about her was just lovely. And at the end, everyone stood up and clapped her. And the last thing the priest said was, because we're such an Elvis family, he said, uh, Katie was always truly taking care of business. And if you know Elvis, you know that's his trademark. TCB, I've actually got a tattoo now of it <laughs> but she would have probably gone mad at me because I remember saying to her I wanted one of these ages ago and she was like, why the fuck are you copying me? <laughs> She's got one but um, just makes sense because we're such an Elvis family but I remember him saying that I remember thinking, he's so right Like she always was truly taking care of business she was always taking care of this, like everything <laughs> Her work was so lost without her. Because she was always organised, always doing everything. Oh. This is the first time I've got upset today. But I can really laugh now about her. I can really smile about her. It's just sad. So these are the moments you get, don't you? You just get these little moments where you're just like, oh, and it hits you and you just think about her. Because she lived in Birmingham, it didn't, I mean, for a long time, even now, it still doesn't feel like she's not here because 
I didn't see her often. I saw her probably, I don't know, maybe like four times a year. I think four or three or four times a year because she lived quite far and she was so busy. Um, so we didn't see her often, but we were always talking on the phone. We was always WhatsApping each other, always always ask about Ruby, she was always sending me things for Ruby, always asking if she needed anything. Um, I was thinking about her a lot lately because, <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but Little Mix have just started a tour and they're touring actually this week, I think they're starting at the O2 in Greenwich where we grew up and um, Katie always says, oh, me and you should take Ruby to Little Mix one day because Ruby loves Little Mix, my little girl. She loves Little Mix. And I always said, oh, she's way too young. Like, she's too young to sit at a Little Mix concert because at that time she was, like, three, four. And um, actually the other day I saw some little girls going to Little Mix concert online and I thought, oh, it just makes me think of her. <coughs> so sorry, I've got an awful cough as well. As you can probably hear, I've got a cold at the minute as well, so that's not helping with vertigo. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's just funny the things you think of that remind you of her. Oh, well, and then you end up feeling like this. Now I've got a headache. But, it's just hard, isn't it? It's hard. And I think everybody who gets through these things are doing really well. I can't imagine what it's like for my mum and my dad. You just can't imagine ever, especially if you're a mum, you can't imagine losing a kid ever at what age. It doesn't matter what age because it is true. I remember my mum always saying, like, you girls, you're always going to be my babies. And you'd be like, oh, shut up, mum. Like, I'm not a baby. Even when I had my little girl, I was 22, so I wasn't young, young, but I was still young because I was, I was sorry, an immature 22-year-old. And I think my mum couldn't believe that her baby was having a baby. I'm the youngest of three sisters. So I remember saying to her, like, you know, I'm not a little kid anymore. And I even say it to her now. I go, mum, I'm a nearly 30-year-old woman. Like, but it's so true. Like, Ruby says things now. My little girl, like, oh, don't embarrass me. I should go to me. No, don't, you don't need to help me with that. I can do it. And I think to myself, oh, you're not my baby anymore. She's nearly seven and she thinks she's 17. And I think, God, she's not my baby anymore. Like... And it's so true, it doesn't matter what age they are, they're your babies. <laughs> um, I think my mum's being really brave today. Because she was so happy on the phone to me, just laughing and giggling. And I know that she's going to put the phone down and then probably start crying. I think she might come over later for a cup of tea and see my little one, just to keep her distracted. Keep my dad distracted as well. Um, <coughs> but yeah... This wasn't how I wanted to do this video today. I just wanted to tell, basically say, I was torn between what to do and I don't think there is a right answer and no matter what you do, you will cope with it in your own way, celebrate life in your own way. Um, that's what I want to do. I'm, I'm getting my ass together, I'm getting my acting gear and other way around. Um, and yeah, I'm just doing me. And it's, it might be selfish, but I need to do me for my own mental health. To be a good mum, to be a good partner. I'm working on me. And I've been doing that, I think, for the last two years. I think, okay. I had a, you know, I've, I've had ups and downs, like everyone. But I really think since m March this year, I really do think I've been doing well. Um, I'm still anxious. I still get anxiety. I've been. I was very anxious yesterday, especially when I'm ill. I think a lot of. I think a lot of people who suffer with anxiety get very anxious when you're ill because you're ill and you're not feeling yourself and you're not feeling a hundred percent and you worry about what it could be. And I'm probably dizzy from my fucking cold that I've had, but cause I've had it for nearly I think a week and a half. Um, but yeah, it's. It's hard, but it's good. It's all right. I'm having a good day. I'm okay. Um, and the, probably next time you see my video, I'll, I'll probably next video I'll be absolutely off my fucking nut doing another mukbang with Rachel. <laughs> so it's just crazy. That one minute you're okay, and the next minute you're completely 
shit, but I suppose that's grief. That's anxiety, that's depression. That's mental health, yeah. I'm glad more people talk about it now. So many, so many people now talk about mental health and it, and people say, you know, people encourage people to talk about it and you must. Everyone must talk about it. Old, young, man, woman. Everyone has to talk about mental health. And getting yours back to the way it is. I'm going to go now. <laughs> I'm going to go and decide what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. Sending love, guys. Layers. <laughs>